Oh, no, no. Permineon. No, 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 no. Oh, we lost some guys to boiling oil, but at least we didn't lose Permineon himself. Okay, guys, welcome back. So, just going over the campaign map really quick. Um, let's see. I think I mentioned last time that I was considering having, like, just creating a force that could go and take Petra so that Alexander and Parminion don't have to turn around. Or if just one of them doesn't have to turn around. And so that's what I've started doing here at Memphis, Tyre, and Isis. Um, troops are being trained up. It won't be a permanent force, it's just they're just being trained up just long enough to take Petra, and then it can be disbanded. Basically you're going to have six hoplite units, four javelin men, and I think two archers, and that should be enough to take the place quite easily. And they'll be under the command of... Adalus, is how I choose to pronounce that. Technically, he's going to be the governor of Tyre, but that means he can he can step out of his city for just a couple of turns to go and take Petra, and that should be the end of that. Though, actually, I think I may have him go and start placing watchtowers as well. In fact, he might take some of the troops with him, because there could be rebels hiding in these hills that I don't see or know about. I wonder if I should even have, like, another general assist him, because that's a lot of territory to place watchtowers over. I do have my spy running through here to just make sure there aren't any other settlements that uh, I might have missed. But I don't think there is. Uh, one of my assassins, Ch Cherix, that's how I choose to pronounce that. He's already offed two merchants and as you can see is closing in on a third. And another assassin over here has also taken out one merchant and is now going for his second kill over there. As you may have also noticed, the Macedonian navy has defeated the Persians that were besieging, or not besieging, blockading the port here. And they retreated over here. And so the Macedonian navy is in pursuit to just eliminate them. It also meant that Pella is no longer super angry with us, so we managed to knock down its garrison considerably. In fact, here's, I was basically just training up a new peasant unit anytime they were too unhappy because I already had the tax rate as low as it could go. As you can see, actually, I was even able to raise it just a little bit while only retaining the one peasant unit there. My lord. But anyway, I'm having them cross the border into Scythia just to boost the population there once I disband them, because they're they're quite far away from ever being able to expand their settlement. And once our assassins have dealt with all the black market merchants, you know, I'm not going to call them assassins, our, our secret police, once the secret police have eliminated all of the black market uh, merchants in this area will be completely clean of any ill-intentioned forces that are in our borders, or at least on, on this side. So actually, we don't have any rebels over here either, or any rebellious cities, so that's actually the case here as well. And I think down here in Egypt, well, Egypt, I should say Africa, because I believe this, strictly speaking, isn't part of Egypt over here, but maybe it is. I'm not the biggest geography person, but then you also have to consider this map isn't exactly to scale. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not sure where the borders necessarily are. Yes, things are going pretty well. Uh, we do have a slight rebel force up here. I actually have Antigonus, who was placing watchtowers here. Uh, we've just passed right by. I didn't actually see them. Hopefully they don't actually attack him. I don't think the peasants are too much of a threat, but I don't know what that other unit is, and... I don't want it to be some kind of spear unit. So I'm going to give him a couple of hoplites just so that he could go ahead and eliminate them too once he returns from placing that last watchtower. Because again, this, this is impassable terrain at this point, so he won't be able or need to go any further than that. So the enemy did not take Susa, though the citizens of Susa did get some rioting in which is why the peasant unit that we trained up is slightly undermanned. Oh, did I not retrain them? I guess that would also be why it's slightly undermanned, because I did repair the buildings that were destroyed, but I must have forgotten to just replenish the peasants there. 
I did also give them an extra unit here. I just grabbed some mercenaries to throw in there. Uh, because the buildings were damaged, so I couldn't even train a unit of peasants. So that's what we'll do, is we'll train a unit of peasants to replace the mercenaries. Not that they're very expensive. But I guess every little bit counts. Alright, now on to the main events here. I did place Alexander on the ford here, just in front of this sizable Persian force, but they actually haven't attacked him, so I think he's going to have to step out of there and attack them himself. I think I also am going to have Parminion attack as well. I don't think he'll actually get to fight a battle, simply because I assume that these guys will retreat into Babylon. You could probably start a siege, though, of the place, and that would probably be fine. I guess it's possible that they'll stand and fight for a battle, but I don't think they will. I believe this will be a fight here, though. Yes, Let's just quickly have... Well, actually, you know what? I don't remember when it was I last saved. Apparently it wasn't during this turn, so let's go ahead and save it first. Oh, and actually, before we go any further over there, I do have a couple of spies down here. Wait, where's my other spy? Okay, there he is. I have a spy down here and one up here, and he's just kind of, they're kind of scouting ahead here. There were some sizable Persian forces here, but they're apparently gone. I don't know where they went. We also found a couple of extra settlements, like Tabe, Tabe there. But anyway, um, it does look like, by the way, we can actually go in multiple directions. We can go north and we can go east. So it actually, I think it's a good idea to have both Alexander and Parminion down here, just so that... Like, let's say if, if we have Alexander continue going east, we can have Parminion go north, for example, and get more territory that way. All right, but anyway, now let's go ahead and have Parminion go ahead and attack. And as predicted, they've just gone right into the city. Let's have him go ahead then and place the city under siege. Oh no! <laughs> no! They have heavy Bactrian cavalry! Oh, that's not good. They have two of them. I bet you they're fully manned too. I noticed that, you see how it has a question mark next to where, where the unit number would be to show like how many men there are? But if you hover over it, the unit card says the number of men. Unless that just tells you the number of men who would be there if the unit was full. Here, let's try it with this unit down here. No, no, it does seem to be... It, that does seem to tell you the actual number of men, so... Um... I assume that's not an intended feature, because then it kind of makes it pointless to have, like, question marks here if you can always just hover over them to see their... their numbers. I mean, it's a good thing they don't have archers, but they do have their own javelin men and, again, the, the horrible... Horrible Bactrian Cavalry. That's not good. Alright, well, anyway, let's get right into the battle. Because, again, I do assume that the Prince, because he is the faction heir, R Roshne. Roshne? I think Roshne sounds better, so we'll go with Roshne. I assume he'll stand and fight because he has a decently sized force. Only one unit of archers, and it's mostly destroyed. No Bactrian cavalry, which is excellent. Though he does have some chariots there, so we'll have to be wary of them. Actually, they have a lot of Her Hyrcanians as well. That's a little unfortunate. I don't think they do a terrible amount of damage with their javelins, but it's just another, like, annoyance, I guess. But I have to admit, their units are at mostly low strength. Only this unit seems to be at full strength. This one's only got 16 which we can tell by hovering over it instead of looking at the, the question mark there. And this one's only got 34, so it's not so bad. All right, let's let them have it. Whoa. Okay, I did not think that they would retreat. Oh dear, <laughs> what to do? I don't want to leave Alexander right here, because if I do that, then they might just gang up on Parminion. Because, I mean, that's a pretty sizable force. That would be like, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 units, plus 16 units here. 
Wait a minute, 16 units. I mean, that would be 27 units, but didn't they have 18 a minute ago? Oh, maybe they merged some of their forces, because I notice that... Um, let's see, where did that... Yeah, we've got like a unit of Hyrcanian cavalry here. That's, that's 50 of them now, and I don't think we had a 50 unit before. I think they merged some some units there. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's see, can Alexander get around here? The the green seems to suggest that I can, but looking at the red here, I it seems to suggest that I cannot. I bet you I could stand right next to Parminion over here, though. Okay. Oh well. I still still I think if they attack Parminion. If they attack Parminion, I think Alexander would still be drawn into that fight. Um, let's see, let's... Well, let's let's do let two siege towers and... Well, no, one siege tower and ladders, that's fine. Settlement under siege, sir. To be honest, I almost want Alexander to take the fight in the city anyways, just because of the Bactrian cavalry. Well, I don't know, I think Parminion would be able to do it. Because we would just, uh, we would try and do what we did before, where we could kind of get them out of the center of the settlement and, like, try and surround them. Alright, what should we have these guys do? We don't want them to stay there, because they'll just be eliminated. You know what, we'll just have them go right over here and sit in Hatra, because, I mean, that's close enough that they can come back very quickly. Actually, we have Parminion's reinforcements in there as well, so all the reinforcements could just sit in Hatra until the situation around Babylon has stabilized. All right, but anyway, um, it looks like we actually don't have a battle this turn, but I think we will next turn, so I will just bring you guys back. In fact, uh, it'll probably just be a minute, <laughs> as far as you guys are concerned, and the battle will be on regardless. Okay, guys, welcome back. And it should have only been a moment or two for you guys, but basically I think it's been like two turns now. I'm not going to discuss, I mean, we already talked about the campaign map. Assassins have been killing, <laughs> uh, or no, no, not assassins. The secret police have been eliminating various criminals, black market scum that we have had to deal with. The Persian fleet has been completely annihilated and our anti-Petra force is being gathered up here and should be able to attack in a couple of turns. Apart from that, nothing else really of interest has happened. So let's get right over to the battle that I left you guys off on last time. So basically, we still got Perminion here, just to the east of the city, and he is going to attack. He's got some ladders and a uh, siege tower there. I've got Alexander just to his south. Now, what I'm hoping is going to happen here is Parminion attacks the city and uses his night fighter trait to basically just fight the battle by himself. Uh, that would be ideal. Yes, and I already checked this general. He doesn't have enough stars to have the night fighter trait, though I guess I am a little concerned that he might have like the trait regardless, because I think you can get the trait by just like fighting a night battle, even if you technically don't have the stars for it. So... He could join in the battle, or it could be one of those situations where for some reason I just can't initiate a, a night battle. But I guess if that happens, and this army joins the battle, then so should Alexander, and so we'll just have him try and intercept Roshne's army here. Now, if we are able to initiate a night battle, obviously Perminion takes Babylon, and then once that battle is over, Alexander can then just attack Roshne and fight him on his own. So... That is what we're going to do. Arminion, let him have it. And as you can see, there's no option to fight a night battle. I really don't know what the conditions for that are. Because I know that I've definitely fought night battles before at settlements. So it says that can't be it. Maybe it's like if there's too many forces in the area, then, then it doesn't work. I don't know. Okay, well, anyway, you guys already know the plan. Alexander will hopefully be able to intercept Roshne, and Parminion will hopefully take the city. So let's just get right into the battle. Okay, guys, welcome to the battle. 
And it certainly looks like it's going to be an interesting battle. Let's get that out of there. Okay, so here's the situation. Herminion actually started off on this side, but I noticed his uh, deployment zone extended all the way over to this side of the settlement as well. And this is the side, as you can see, that the Persians' reinforcements are coming down. Now, unfortunately, it is down a hill. Of course, there would be a nice big hill to help them with their charge. But anyway, I decided to have his hoplites and his archers just stay over here and intercept the enemy themselves rather than necessarily having Alexander's units do it. Uh, just because they could instantly start the battle with uh, already being in position for that. The Hippaspis all have the ladders and are going to charge the walls. Which is going to be a little unfortunate because I think... Well, the Peltes... The Peltes aren't a good hand-to-hand -hand unit. But the problem is, is that uh, they'll throw javelins before uh, they actually get up the walls. So that's going to be a little painful. And of course the Immortals are archers, so they will open fire on us as well. So it's going to be a hard fight for the walls. In fact, we're probably going to use, lose quite a lot of our Hippaspis. Actually, we might even lose a lot of our Hoplites against this entire enemy force over here. But um, hopefully Parminion's army doesn't get too badly mauled. And hopefully Alexander's troops get onto the field quickly. I am a slightly concerned, though. Because I don't see them actually getting onto the battlefield yet. So I'm wondering if... I've goofed up in some way, and, like, these guys are going to sit outside of the battle until, like, there's, I guess, space for them to enter, even though the enemy gets to, you know, throw in all of its forces right away. <laughs> I sort of thought if the enemy gets to throw in a second army, then I would as well, but that may not be the case. Anyway, let's go ahead and start the battle here. Um, you guys... Oh, ow. Holy crap. That's very unfortunate. All right. You guys attack there. You guys get over here. Hopefully the hoplites will take that. Oh, wow. They took that charge very well, actually. Um, the hoplites don't seem to be instantly killing the chariots like I think they should be. What are you guys doing? Get out of there. Come on, guys. Hurry up and get up on the walls. Or you will all die. Probably. Okay, you guys firing on them. Go ahead and fire at them. You guys fire at them. All right, let's get these cavalry over here. Oh, shoot. They're actually attacking from behind. Fire at them. Fire at them. Oh, here. Get over there. Get over there. Guys attack there. You guys attack there. You guys attack them. In fact, actually, why don't we have these guys just push forward? Well, except for this unit. We should have them basically assist these guys here. Our ladders are at the walls. Now bravery and steel will be tested as our men fight over the defenses. Oh, that's going to end badly for that Hippaspis unit, I think. Are you guys face face those guys? Good. These men know their doom approaches. All right, General, get in here and attack these guys. Oh, dear. Run, guys, run! Okay, how are the Hippaspas doing? 
people are actually doing pretty well. Better than I thought they would. All right, you guys. Attack those Peltists in the rear. Oh, no, no. Permineon. No, 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 no. Oh, we lost some guys to boiling oil, but at least we didn't lose Permineon himself. Archers, fire at them. Permineon, what are you doing? Get out of there. Just leave. Alright, we'll have all of the archers fire on them, so that should help out there. You guys get over here. You guys get over here. Yeah, it looks like Alexander's forces are not coming onto the battlefield as I initially thought they would. Oh, they're routing! Keep firing, keep firing, keep firing. Actually, no. Stop firing. You guys, get in there and just see see how many of them you can eliminate. Okay, you guys are slaughtering them. That is good. You guys are killing them. That is good. Um, you guys are getting attacked from behind, so why don't you turn around and leave these Peltas to this unit here? Or, no, no. Attack just a little longer. Alright, now turn around. Alright. All the cavalry get over here. All the archers get over here. All the hoplites get out of your phalanxes and get over here just so that everyone is in a sensible place. <laughs> Hippaspis should have the walls here shortly. And I'm afraid we did lose a fair number of them, especially from this unit. Which unit is that? Ah, it's this one. Alright, we will have to get through that Kardake's unit in order to get to the wall. Or to the gate, I mean. Alright, still, we were able to eliminate the reinforcements without Alexander's help. Which is good, because he's not going to help at all. They can, they can cheer us on from the sidelines, I guess. All right, this Hippaspis unit has finished off its targets, so let's just uh, add some confusion to the enemy by having them go over to the gate over there. See, can you guys throw your spears while you're on the walls? It'd be nice if they could throw spears over the heads of these Hippaspis here. Soldiers have captured the walls. Now is the time to press on and capture this place. Okay, what exactly have they got over here? Okay, there's one of the dreaded Bactrian cavalry units. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where are you guys going? Where are you guys going? Get, get back over here! Get back over here! Get back over here! Get back over here! Okay, apparently that's not going to work. Alright, well then, both of you just take out the co Oh, wait, they're already broken anyways, fighting to the death. Alright, fine, excellent. So, let's see... Yes, there's the Bactrians there. Looks like they're gathering most of their forces over to the gate, as one might expect. I wonder if we could send... Maybe we could send a cavalry unit over here. Just to try and lure some of them out. Oh, and I see they have immortals in there. 
AKA archers. I guess fire at will if they come close enough for that to actually happen. Orders completed. Whose orders are completed? Oh, okay. Ah, you are going to throw your spears. Excellent. Let those immortals have it. All right, excellent. So now, which one of you is the weaker? All right, this one here. Why don't you guys come all the way over here? And then the other unit stand right over here, and I guess you guys can fire it well as well. I don't believe the towers will actually fire inside the settlement. That would be nice if they did, but I don't think they will. Yes, this unit got terribly mauled. That's unfortunate for them. All right, so now this gateway is in fact ours, but the enemy is gathering in front of it. And I think the, let's see, there's one of the Bactrian units. Right, and there's the other one. We already saw them. We will definitely need our generals to push in, specifically I think these two guys, to take them out. Oh. The Immortals are firing at us! Okay, uh, you guys stop wherever you are. Can you actually hit them from there? Ah, the answer appears to be yes. Okay, good. So what we will do then is let's have the two generals come forward here and we'll send them just straight into these guys here. Meanwhile, we'll have some of the hoplites. Here, let's get the hoplites forward. We'll have the archers just kind of go behind them. Let's get the rest of the cavalry just kind of up here. Be nice if we could get these guys to just leave by throwing spears at them. You guys fire at will as well. Okay, good. Yes, excellent. You guys get in there. And let's see, we'll have three units of hoplites just pour in over here, and then the other four and pour in over here. Oh, those are the Hyrcanians. Ah! Oh. Right, the Immortals are returning fire now, and the Hypaspis can't fire back because they've thrown every javelin they had. All right, fine. Be that way. All right. You guys get in there. Oh, dang, they do have a... They have a uh, Spearman unit in there. That's unfortunate. All right, well, let's see if we can just kill off the Hyrcanians then. And then we'll just have them retreat. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Go for the, the Bactrians. Who's firing? Oh, there's multiple units of Immortals over here. That's not good. 
All right, we need our archers in here as well. So archers, get in here. You guys push into their lines over there. The enemy general is running away. This is no way for the leader to be. Okay, good, good, good. It is beyond belief. The gods be praised. The enemy general is dead. His men know their doom approaches. No, 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 that's good. We were able to break those infantry units, meaning... Oh, um, stop. Actually, both of you, stop. Form a phalanx. And then engage the enemy. Oh, no, 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 no! Get back over here! Get back over here! Shoot, are the Bactrians gonna get away? All right, attack the Hyrcanians first. All right, Hoplites, chase after them. Oh, no, no, There's, they are going to stay. Good, good, good. Get in there and kill them. Oh, good, good. Continue your pursuit of them. Oh crap, we just lost one of our generals. That is very unfortunate. Where are the hoplites? Okay. Archers. Get over here. Oh good, they're broken. All right, let's send that general's bodyguard after them. You guys make sure the immortals don't get back. See, since we this bodyguard has lost its general, the unit's just going to be eliminated anyway, so what we might as well have them do is just be a little more reckless with them. Now, I should actually just bring all of the bowmen over here. And we still have two units of hoplites left. I guess we'll just have them kind of sit here for now. All right, lower your spears. Here comes the enemy. All right, go and get these Barkanian horsemen. See, let's have you go over here, and let's bring these hoplites forward. All right, they're wavering. I guess that's good. Is there anyone we can fire on? I guess go ahead and fire at will, and then I think they won't actually fire at men who are, like, standing right amongst our troops, so they'll fire over their heads. Oh, um, I guess they're kind of doing that. Okay, where is Parminion? Okay, he's outside. Good. Um, let's have him, I guess we'll have him charge in here just in case it turns out he's needed. Uh, looks like the Royal Squadron here is not doing so well against the Barkanians. Whoops. No, no. Attack, attack, attack. Okay, you form up that way. You are actually, I guess, more or less fine. So drop your spears. Oh, crap. You guys also drop your spears. And fight. Units. 
You guys fire it well as well. Okay, good. It looks like we'll be able to just kind of shoot them to death. Alright, and you guys eliminated your problem over here as well. Alright, we'll bring this general over here, even though I don't think we'll be using him anymore for the rest of the battle. Okay, there's Parminion. What unit of bowmen is this? Oh, it's the one on the end, so... They're not within range, unfortunately. Um, I think we are occasionally hitting our own guys in the back there, but looks like the enemy is about to run out. You know what? Let's have them stop, actually. <laughs> but it looks like we just have scattered pieces of Persian troops still left. And they seem to want to rout the moment uh, they get within range of our troops. And there they go. <laughs> All right, you know what? Just fire it well. Eliminate the remainder of those guys there. And we'll have these guys just start pushing forward. Come on, there's only two of them left. There we go. Well, I guess they got one of them. But you guys push forward. I guess we're just going to tell them to stop firing because, yeah, they're definitely killing our guys. Alright. Let's just have the hoplites push forward. Oh, there's some, uh... Arcanians, or Bactrians, still left. What, what are you guys doing? Alright, let them have it. You guys stop. Let's let them go ahead and stab themselves right on the spears there. Show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. Yes, only frightened rabbits running from our men. Okay, are these guys gonna like charge out, immediately break, not reach our lines, and then yep, they're gonna go right back. <laughs> I imagine these guys are gonna do something similar. Actually, um, you guys stay there. Guys, go kill them. Now kill him. Ooh, did they just... Yep, they just died right on the spears of the hoplites back there. So you, I believe, are the last defender. There we go. All right, well... Oh, Alexander's on the battlefield now. <laughs> hey guys, I'm here! Did I miss anything important? <laughs> I mean, we were just standing over off to the side of the battlefield here, just watching you guys, doing nothing to assist you. I assume that's fine. You guys aren't bitter about that at all, right?
All right, but anyway, Parminion was able to win a great victory. Just, uh, there's the overview again. I'd say about a thousand versus nearly five thousand of theirs. Unfortunately, we did lose one of our generals, so we'll have to bring an allied cavalry unit down here to replace him. Still, uh, they actually definitely, you know, despite their losses, they definitely inflicted severe casualties on the enemy. In fact, just between these two generals' bodyguards, they lost 1,200. So that's a significant portion of the casualties right there. These hoplites did very well. Hippaspis did very well. I mean, they took a lot of casualties, but that's because they were, they were frankly given... They were given one of the worst jobs, like literally charging into arrow fire and javelin fire to then fight on the walls that are, were held by the enemy. And yet despite that, they still killed more than they lost. In fact, this Apaspus unit did particularly well. And then once they were done taking the walls, they were still throwing javelins at the enemy who were on the streets below. So they, they definitely earned... They earned an immense amount of praise for their courageous actions in this battle. Uh, the, the Hepaspis are the MVPs for this battle. Oh yeah, and look, there's, there's Alexander there at the bottom. <laughs> Alright, well anyway, let's go ahead and actually, let's take a look at this really quick. Yeah, you see, you see how much damage these Persian Peltis units did? That's because I think they were throwing javelins before the Hepaspis made it to the walls, and that hurt quite a lot. Actually, how well did the, uh, let's see, yeah, here we go, Heavy Bactrian Cavalry. You see, they, they barely did any damage at all. Presumably because I threw my general's bodyguards at them, and they did manage to kill one of them, so. I mean, it wasn't an entire, you know, a complete loss on their part. We lost one of our generals and therefore his bodyguards. All right, but anyway, let's take this back to the campaign map. All right, we are definitely going to have to exterminate them. And we now get the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Which, I mean, my income wasn't bad before, but now it's gone up by a fair bit, actually. I think uh, somewhere between three and 4,000. I mean, part of that is because we actually have the city itself and its income has been added to our, to our own. But yes, we're definitely not worrying about money anymore. Not not for a good long time. Oh right, Babylon's a huge city too, so it actually can't be upgraded any further. Wow, look at... Look at these buildings. Alright, did they build up their military buildings? Okay, we can replenish... We can replenish all of Parminion's troops here. Excellent. That's what I was hoping for. And actually, we can train companion cavalry here. Ah, that's pretty good, actually. Because then I think we can replenish... Not that one. We can replenish this unit here that was reinforcing Alexander. Yeah, it looks like the only thing we wouldn't be able to replenish is actually the... Uh, phalanges, because I see that we don't seem to have a big enough barracks building for that. Though we do only need a few turns in order to, uh, to get that. I should probably get that just so that... Because, I mean, Alexander's not going to wait here. I mean, his, his forces are doing pretty well, and we've got backups over here. So we don't need to wait for his phalanges, you know, to be retrainable or anything. But I still think I should build that building just so that we can send him reinforcements from a forward operating post here. Alright, but anyway, the Battle of Babylon is over. Parminion has won a glorious victory while Alexander and his army just looked on and waited for them to actually do all the hard work. Uh, but anyway, I think that's actually going to be it for now, so I will bring you guys back as more of interest occurs.